Welcome everybody. Today is Monday, October 26th, and we are here with Sandy Metzel, who is going to be talking to us about understanding your digital audience. And what that means is um, it's important to understand your digital, digital audience and give them the type of content they need. If you feel like you're missing the mark with your content or you're struggling to find content ideas, that's what today's talk is about, especially um, learning what your audience, your target audience is searching for um, to help lead your content creation and marketing efforts. So um, we're happy to have Sandy. Sandy is the as a digital marketing specialist, and she's also the founder of Social Media Breakfast Savannah. Um, and the purpose of the of Social Media Breakfast Savannah is um, to provide a community to discuss business applications of social media, digital marketing. And um, some of the results that have, that have been reported from attendees is increased sales, business co uh, contracts, employment leads, collaborations, and networking, to name a few. Um, uh, social Media Breakfast meets on the third Friday of every month. So the next one is November 20th, and it's from 8 to 9 a.m. So right before work, you can get in there and um, meet up. It's a quick little meetup and um, a great way to start your, your morning before you head into the weekend. So um, without further ado, I'm gonna toss it over to Sandy so she can get started. Hi everybody, thanks for joining me today for tips for understanding your digital audience. My, again, my name is Sandy Mensel. I'm a digital marketer here in Savannah. And having the ability to read the mind of your target audience would be a pretty good superpower to have if you want to create content based around topics that your target audience people are really interested in. And speaking of reading minds, I'm wondering what you're thinking right now. If I had to guess, I might hear you say, I'm starving, I didn't eat breakfast. Is this really gonna help me? How long is this gonna take? So instead of me guessing, tell me uh, in the chat why you would want this superpower in terms of your of a business. You know, in terms of your business, why would you want this superpower? So drop that into the chat uh, while I switch over to the presentation. Okay, Kate, just double checking you're seeing the presentation. <laughs> okay, yeah, awesome. I've seen it. Okay, so at any time during this presentation, if you think of a resource or a tool that could help the group, please drop that into the chat. I am all about collaboration. And all the tools that I mentioned will have links at the end. And if anyone entered something into the chat, why they would want this super tower, um, Kate, would you mind just kind of uh, keeping an eye on that for me? Okay, so. Yeah, we have a couple of people that have put things. Uh, better sales, said Emily, and Jeremy said, I want, to, to build something that people want to rip out of my hands. They want it so bad, Victoria said, so that it can meet their needs to the fullest and help alleviate their pain. And Emily said again, more targeted messages to specific clients. Okay, awesome. So here's a quote from a small local business owner who creates videos. At a recent meeting, he said to me, Sandy, I'm struggling to get repeat business because my clients say, they love my videos, but they are not getting the results that they'd hoped for. Having the superpower of reading minds would come in handy for him. What you're gonna learn in the next 30 minutes, an overview of finding competitors, an overview of ways to uncover actual phrases used by people searching online, and five ways to understand your digital audience. Finding competitors, utilizing search listening tools, Amazon reviews and communities. I've been doing this type of work for six years. I've worked for clients in the healthcare, fitness, legal, retail, and nonprofit industries. And for reasons unknown to me, <laughs> I get energized talking about digital marketing is one of the reasons why I founded Social Media Breakfast. And that picture is some of our community at Boxy Loxy. Outside of work, I'm a group fitness instructor. I dislike cooking and I dearly love that little boy in the screen. That is my grandson, Teddy. <laughs> love him so much. So as an overview, here's a framework of how a business might lay out its marketing goals. 
Today's focus is on the research phase. And using that framework and adding some of the SMART aspects, which are specific, measurable, attainable, realistic, and timely, here's how you can lay out the marketing objectives for a business that conducts historic tours in Savannah. So the service you're selling are historic walking tours. The content you wanna create are videos. You want a video created. Your target audience is gonna be uh, those that are of age 50 and up who are visiting from out of town. You want that video done by the end of November. And the social channels you're thinking of using are YouTube, Facebook, and Instagram with the goals of getting 500 impressions of the video, which lead to 50 website clicks, which then in turn books 10 tours. It's always important to start with that business objective. And if you wanted to read my mind as a digital marketer, what we wish business owners would understand, <laughs> sometimes the research reveals information that affects the objective. Again, today's focus is gonna be on that research step. So um, today we're looking, the first thing we're gonna look at here are competitors. Again, just as a reminder, any other tools you can think of, please drop them into the chat. So on the left is a picture of my Live Oaks public, public library card. On the right is a screenshot of a search I conducted when I entered historic walking tours near me into Google search. This presentation is gonna focus on two ways to perform competitor research using our local library and Google Maps. Of course, there are other ways to do this. And why do we do this? It may reveal competitors you may not have realized you had, and it can show you which types of businesses and how many are in your area. And out of curiosity, I'd like to know, do you have a library card? Just wondering, it's a kind of an underutilized resource here. So this is the homepage of our library. And the first step, we're gonna access that A to Z database. All right, Jess got her first card when she was five, that's cool. Um, to save time, I'm not gonna go through detailed steps, but I did create a five minute video that walks you through all those detailed steps. So you're gonna access the database by going to the library. Make sure you grab that library card before you start. This is the homepage of the A to Z database once you log in. It is a tool that extracts information from various public records. The CIS and NAICS codes are categories that the government uses to classify businesses. And this database will pull data based on your sort criteria and return records based upon your input requests. For example, going back to the business offering historical walking tours here in Savannah, after entering the sort options, you want to then run some reports. Here's a report of the list of businesses that offer tours here in Savannah. When I put in the sort factors, I returned, it returned about 70 records. And that sounds about right to me. We have a lot of tours here in Savannah. If I had gotten, you know, 20,000 um, hits back, I you know, would have known that probably is not correct. So I would have had to sort it further, but that sounds about right. And then drilling down a little further, this is a detailed report of Old Town Trolley. You can um, see here that the, one of the top things that I want you to note uh, is the area competitors. You're also able to access an overview of the business, the SIC codes, there's some revenue. That's of course if the business inputs this information. But in terms of competitors, it's, it's just, it's very useful. So another type of report is this pie chart, which if you're a very, you know, visual person, you're gonna like this type of report. And this happened to show, you know, there were, 44% of the tours are considered tour operators. And then the pie chart broke it down further than that. And it just gives you a really good gauge of who you're really up against as far as your competitors. 
So here's the takeaway of all this. Once you see who your competitors are, you know, they're doing similar business to you, do a deep dive into their social channels. Look at the natural language that customers are using. And it will give you some good tips about their target audience and how they're able to serve them. And a pro tip for this, these reports, if I ever go on a job interview or something like that, I always run this report. The next competitor research tool that we're gonna look at is Google Maps. And I just want to take you a minute to pause here and really take a look at this statistic. I uncovered this image this week and I'm so glad I was able to share it with you. Did anyone, does anyone realize 70%, you know, Google Maps is used by 70% of monthly navigation and map app users. This is huge. And it's very important if you want your business to show up on Google Maps, to verify your business with Google My Business. That's a whole nother rabbit trail I could go down. But again, let me just state again, if you're a local business and you want your business to show up on Google Maps when people are searching, you have to go through the verification process with Google My Business. So basically, I'm not going to take too much time going over this, but you're going to do the same thing as you did with the A to Z database example. You're going to type in, you know, your topic niche, which my example was tours near me. And since I was located in Savannah, this was what got um, returned back to me. Savannah Bell walking tours, the Savannah walks. And just, it's a little hard to see possibly, but the yellow highlighted shows you the different business types that they're classified under. So uh, the Savannah Bell Walking Tours considered itself a tourist information center. The Savannah Walks considers itself a sightseeing tour agency. So again, it's just a way for you to figure out who your competitors really are, which business most closely aligns with yours, and then do that deep dive into their social channels. So this type of Research is considered social listening. Reference USA, yes it is, Mark. Um, I used to access that database in Houston and I believe it's now called Data Axel. When I, I actually still have a Houston library card and they've switched over to Data Axel. I don't know if that's just locally or what, but um, yes, that is a great uh, database also. So moving on to tip number two for reading your customers' minds are the, reads, the search listening tools. We're gonna to explore two, answer the public and Google trends and keywords everywhere is sort of like an addendum. Here is just another astounding statistic that I found that I'm so happy I can share with you guys. Google captures over 92% of worldwide search traffic and over 95% of mobile search traffic. Let that sink in. Here's a definition of search listening. It's the process of understanding what an audience truly thinks based on the unbiased perspective of millions of people using, quote unquote, the ultimate source of insight search data. And here's a quote from Mr. Stevens David Witz. Google searches are the most important data set collected on the human psyche. People type into Google search things they wouldn't reveal to their closest friends or family members. They're asking Siri questions and they're usually they're using just natural conversation language. It's very powerful and Slightly creepy. If anyone is brave enough, drop something in the chat to share with us what you've searched for lately. Nothing, nothing risque, but go ahead and let everybody know if you've searched for something that maybe you didn't tell your closest friend. So what we're gonna look at first is Google Trends. Google Trends is a website by Google. 
It displays historical data of the regions where your search term is most popular and offers up related topics and queries which are popular or trending. It helps you understand the context around the thoughts, feelings, and behaviors of consumers. And what you see here on this chart is a real life example of a sort I did for a window covering retail business. The business sells two types of products that I was looking to do research on. Window blinds, which are shown in red. I'm sorry, window blinds, they're shown in blue. And the window shades, which are shown in red. Doing this research revealed that the search term window blinds was three times greater than people searching for window shades, except in Maine. I don't know if you can, oh, you can't, yeah. On the bottom there where the, you can see the, you know, the um, map of the United States. Why do people in Maine, and I think that's Vermont, search for window shades instead of window blinds? I don't know, but, if I live there, that would affect how I would do my content strategy. So some of the best features of Google Trends is first of all, it's free. Another great thing about it is uncover unknowns you might not have thought about in terms of relevant searches that it shows you other phrases that people are searching for and you may not have thought about that. I de definitely was the case when I did my search for the window covering business. It also can narrow in to the state level. And in some of the um, aspects of the tool, you can get a little more granular, uh, but you're not always seeing, I would like the tool to go a little more granular, but it doesn't. And on the flip side though, uh, it's international. You can narrow your search by all sorts of ways geographically. And I'd say as a pro tip, I would want to use Google Trends before using the next tool, Answer the Public. So this is the homepage of Answer the Public. Believe it or not, this dude isn't as creepy as the previous dude. Uh, does anyone know what I'm talking about? The other guy <laughs> that was on their homepage. The site collects data, the search words, that are entered in, by people into Google and Bing. There is a paid version of this tool, but this tutorial is reviewing the free version, which means your searches are limited to about three per day. And how you would use the tool is you would enter in one to three seed keywords into the tool. And just a quick overview of Google Auto Suggest. You might have noticed that when you start to type something into Google search, words suddenly appear because Google is trying to guess what you're looking for. So say you were on a trip and you just arrived in Green Bay, say, and you type into the Google search box, I've just, you know, you were thinking in your head arrived. Well, the image on the left shows some of the suggestions that Google is guessing that you're interested in. Well, then if you keep going with this example and you write in the, the search, I've just space B, Google auto suggest ideas it thinks you might be searching for. You could do all this typing yourself, but this is actually what Answer the Public does for you. It collects, or the term scrapes, all of that search data uh, out of Google and Bing. So using the window covering business again, I typed in the seed words, my window blinds. And this spoke visual displays one way, Answer the Public displays the results. At the center of the spoke are the keywords I entered and the tentacles show the questions people were asking. This is very interesting because how to fix window blinds, how to close my window blinds, why does my cat lick the window blinds are all searches that people actually put into Google search. Here's another way to answer the public displays the data just as a straight CSV file. Here's a display of just one of the spokes with the preposition without and the resulting search phrases. This is where it gets really interesting as a content creator and the tool really shines. The phrase window blinds without cords is something that people have been searching for. 
And the next phrase is window blinds without strings. If you notice also, the top choice, window blinds without cords, has a little green circle next to it. It's a, a darker green than the bottom phrase, window blinds without hardware. What Answer the Public is showing to you is that there were more search volume for window blinds without cords. It's always the top choice or the, you know, it's the darker the green that's showing the higher the volume. So this would lead me to think that people would be interested in content that is created around those search terms. Maybe it's people with young kids, or maybe they have dogs or cats who play with the strings and they don't want that feature. So the branches of the spoke that contain with or without can be used to understand what features of a product or service people are seeking or avoiding. Other types of insights, four searches, can flag relevant personas that you may not have realized or a need around a certain feature, like window blinds for sliding glass doors or window blinds for large windows. I thought when I did this search that I was gonna find like window blinds for your living room or window blinds for a room, but that's, that wasn't the case. So using the example for four also, can reveal those you know, other target audiences because say you walk, say you found um, there were results that were when I put the word walking tours in for what and what if it came back newlyweds or walking tours for history buffs. Though that would be an example of another type of persona that you then could create content around. And lastly, just an insight around the can searches they're considered validation searches. People are looking for validation around the term. Can shades be washed? Can they be cleaned? Can they be repaired? This is the last part. It's a little more advanced, but you also could install the Keywords Everywhere Chrome browser extension on your computer before you start. Keywords Everywhere is a freemium tool that is very inexpensive and shows more detailed search volume. And just for FYI of what a Chrome extension is, it's a browser-based program that extends the functionality of the browser. This is an example of what a search looks like with the keyword search everywhere results displayed. You see those little graph um, icons there next to the term. So depending on your situation, I would say you'd want to use Google Trends first because Answer the Public does limit the number of times you can access the, the tool per day. So I am actually going to stop and just pause for a second because that was a lot of information. I'm just wondering if you have any questions. Okay, I'm going to keep going then. So the third way to read minds is Amazon. Depending on your niche, Amazon may be a gold mine of consumer insights. I want you to possibly close your eyes for just a minute and just listen to the review that I uncovered in Amazon. And this was, this was again regarding a search I was doing for window coverings. This is an actual quote. These shades were great for about a year, but one by one, the adhesive failed. So I glued them and then the plastic became brittle and began to rip. So I fixed the plastic. Then the mechanism failed. And now I have these garbage things hanging like bits of phlegm from my windows. If you were in a dorm or renting a house, these might work, but sheets work better. They are big, cut to size, and you can hang them with nails and tape. And they are cheap, $9.99 for these babies. And if you move, you can sleep on them, double win. But if you buy these shades, you will regret it. Maybe not today, maybe not tomorrow, but probably a few days after tomorrow. Like me, you'll have to take them all down after measuring all the windows in your house and scrape off the glue and buy better ones on Amazon. All this because I thought I could save some money in some stupid shades. I was wrong and I'm sorry now, but it's too late. Don't be like me. Be smarter than me. You're worth it. Okay. End quote. That is gold. 
And here's the takeaway. If you have a business that competes with do-it-yourselfers, you could create a whole new content category that tells about the horrors of doing projects at home by yourself. Okay, was that me that only thought that was amusing? I thought that was pretty amusing. Okay. It was funny. <laughs> was that you, Kate? Thanks for, thanks. Okay, so um, the fourth way to read your customers' minds are checking Google, Facebook, Yelp, and any platform that your industry gathers in, input and customer uh, reviews. See what you can glean there. These have a slight inherent bias, but can yield gold. So this, before I get to the last tip, now that I've gone through some of these, I'll just give you another minute to enter into the chat. What is the top idea mentioned that you might think would help your business? I'm curious about that. So. Again, the question is, what's the top idea mentioned that you think, think might help your business? All right, so here's the last one. The fifth and last mind reading tip for today, to find communities in your niche. You can search within Facebook, for example, if you go to Facebook and you get to that tab where you can search groups, just type a word that pertains to your niche I'll get to that question in a second. How important is it to change up your content and your marketing campaigns? Um, so, you know, type, type in your niche keywords there and you'll probably be surprised to see a group that might pertain to that. And here's what I'd say, join the group that aligns with your business and be respectful, add value, tr don't sell, but you can really uncover a lot of what people are really thinking by being a part of these um, groups and communities. And again, I'd say though, as a general rule, it's not really where you're gonna to wanna to do your selling, it's where you're gonna be an observer. But I also feel you know, being respectful and trying to add value is always a win-win. So those were the five um, tips I had for you today. It's my conclusion that at least one of these will help you create content that aligns with what people are searching for with the ultimate goal of boosting conversions for your business. And a good marketer should only offer you one call to action, but I have three for you today. So pick one of these ideas that I've mentioned today. Set your timer for 15 minutes and dive in and see what you can uncover. Um, Go and like the Social Media Breakfast Savannah Facebook page. You'll find out what the speakers and topics are. Uh, if you have any questions, you can contact me.